there. Hi. How are you? Good. I'm here to see Thomas. Tommy. Oh, what's up, man? Today, I'm tattooing John Forte from the Fugees. What's up, man? How you been? I'm great, man. Good. I, you know, worked with the Fugees for about uh, three years. It was an incredible time in my life, and, and some would say it was the, the pinnacle of my success as a producer and a writer. What do you want to do? I want to do something really, really important to me. It's a portrait of my mom. Oh, yeah. man. All right, where at? I think I got some room right here. Oh, yeah, that's that prime real estate. You got a picture of her? Yeah, I do. I got black and white and color. Beautiful. Yes, she is. We'll kill it, man. All right, I'm looking forward to it. All right, bro. You know, everybody gets a portrait for a different reason. He wants to get a portrait of his mom. It's right up my alley. According to him, she's everything, so I'm gonna put everything into it. Head over to the mirror, check it out. Yeah, that'll work. What's up, man? What you been up to, man? You're a legend here in New York, <laughs> all over the world, man. The last time I heard about you, you were in the Fuji's, killing it. Yeah. And then, uh, what'd you do? You took a little hiatus? I was away, not because I wanted to be, but because I had to be. What'd you do, man? Possession with intent to distribute 14 kilos of cocaine. You get success at a really young age, and you think that you're untouchable. And, you know, I actually ended up getting into that mindset you were invincible. Yeah, you know, that, that's what I thought. So I got sentenced to 14 years. What? 14 years in federal prison. You know, I don't want to tell people how they should live their lives or what they should do. But I think in telling my story, if it doesn't inspire someone, maybe it'll motivate them to think twice before they maybe take the same risks that I took. I started teaching critical thinking classes while we were inside so that the young men of color in particular could start feeling more entitled to their world. I don't want to feed into this, this stereotype of prison as somehow, you know, some rite of passage or where we're expected to end up. I'm glad you're out, man. You, be, you know, it seems like you've definitely been rehabilitated. I was really, really fortunate. After serving almost seven and a half years, in fact, Damn. I was blessed with the commutation, so I came home early with a, a new lease on life. That's crazy, man. It looks like you had some hills and valleys to cross, but uh, during all that, I take it uh, there's probably one person on this earth that was there for you through the whole thing unconditional, right? I think that's painfully obvious, that woman yeah, right mom, there. Mom, huh? Yes, man. Well, I'm sure you put her through a little pain being gone for seven sure. years, man. Absolutely. But you know, she's alive and well and healthy, and she's happy to have me back. My mother is an exceptional woman. She has the strongest faith that I've ever known. And even when I was down on myself, you know, she would, she would tell me to keep my head up and that, and that everything would be OK. It's the small things in life that mean the most, as opposed to, you know, a big fancy car or a big fancy house. Or, you know, it's like a mother's smile. That's, that's, that's the most precious thing there is.